Okay, <clears throat> we're carrying on with 7.1, effects of interactions, effects of interactions. Uh, the previous video was just a, a quick overview of some, in, uh, some concepts of interactions. Now in this video, we're carrying on with 7.1, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually consider this, this um, area here, okay? Um, I recall actually in one class a student asked me about this area here and now we're going to actually focus on what actually happens during the actual interaction. Okay, So let's consider an example we've seen about seven million times. You have one cart that is, has a, is stationary before collision. You have a, another cart with a, a, a velocity to the right. And here we have, I'm not sure what this is, if I can't remember, but I think it's probably about 0.55 meters per second. And this is zero. Okay, then they interact, right? And then this cart, so there's, there's an interaction during collision. And then after collision, we can see cart one has accelerated to a velocity, I'm not sure what that is, roughly 0.75, somewhere around there. And cart two, this cart here has accelerated negatively to just under 0.2 meters per second. Okay, so we've seen that, how many, how many times did I say? Seven million times? Okay, roughly about seven million times. And uh, just, just to recap, we know that the acceleration of, well, we see that the acceleration of cart one Sorry, the speed of cart one is twice the, the change. It has twice the change of velocity than cart two, which means that cart one's uh, inertia was half uh, cart two. So cart one's inertia is 0.12, cart two is 0.24, so cart one will have twice the change in velocity than cart two in. Take note, it's an elastic collision. Okay, so we all know that there's nothing new there. Now, let's consider what's happening here during the interaction. Let's first look at momentum. The important thing to see regarding momentum is that we know that in an isolated system, we know that the momentum before and the momentum after collision after interaction should be the same. Okay, I think we're, we're happy with that. M1 V1 plus M2 V2 initial should equal M1 V1 plus M2 V2 final. Okay, we're happy with that. In an isolated system, momentum is conserved, which means this, guys. If you take the momentum of cart 1 at this point, and the, the momentum there, and you add them together, you should get the total momentum. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm sure it makes sense. And then after interaction, I uh, sorry, after interaction, after the collision, you again take the momentum of the one cart. So we take there, that is a, just over 0 0.08, and you add the momentum of the other cart which is just above 0.4. So you add, this um, you add this amount and you add this amount. So you take this and you add it to there and you should get the same momentum before and after. But now look, what's interesting is that even during the interaction, the collision, if you sum up that amount with that amount, if you add those two up, you find at, say, a, a time, you, you find the, um, the momentum of the one cart, and at the same time you find the momentum of the other cart, and you add them up, you will keep getting this amount, this same amount of uh, momentum right through the interaction. Okay? So, even during the interaction, the momentum of the two cart system is constant it stays constant okay so that's the one thing we need to we need to see there okay now let's move on to acceleration and see what's happening with acceleration during the interaction 
Okay, so if you look at cart one, cart one accelerates positively to a higher velocity, cart two accelerates negatively to a lower velocity. So um, during interaction, as you can see, first of all, um, when is cart one accelerating? It's accelerating during this time, right? If you if you calculate the slope of these curves, it's going to be zero here, and then suddenly there will be, let's look at cart one, there will be the spike of an acceleration. Okay? And how do you calculate this magnitude here of this acceleration? Well, you need to just calculate the slope. Okay? Or because it's over a finite distance, you would have to calculate the average acceleration, which is delta V over delta T. Okay? So, for cart 1, what is delta V? It's going to be roughly this 0.75 minus 0 divided by roughly maybe 20 milliseconds. Okay? And if you do that, you're going to come to this, this acceleration here of, of just under 40 meters per second squared. Okay? But as you can see, there's, there's a spike in acceleration and then it goes back to a constant velocity. So there's a zero acceleration there. And similarly, CART2 has a negative acceleration. You calculate, so there'll be a negative delta V divided by your delta T and you will get this negative, roughly almost negative 20, minus 20 meters per second squared. Okay? Now, I think that's, that's good enough here. It says here, acceleration magnitude of cart 1 is twice that, the magnitude, right? So, remember the delta V of cart 1 is twice the delta V of cart 2, right? The magnitude of the, of the, the change in velocity is twice that of cart 2. So, the acceleration of cart 1 one has to be twice that of car two. Now we're just talking about the magnitude now. Okay, the, this magnitude is twice that magnitude because cart one has half the inertia of car two. Okay. All right. Now, perhaps I think that's good enough. The next video I'm going to focus on kinetic energy because this will take up about as much time as these three. Okay, see you in the next one.